Welcome back, everyone. Gutsy presenter. Here episode. we are. Here we are. Hi, Scott. Hi. I'm looking forward to this topic, especially if you watched our previous topic around barriers and lecterns. We were talking about being verbose. So that's our topic for today. What does verbose mean to you, Scott? Let me be very concise. Thank you. It's speaking too much. <laughs> <laughs> it is. This happens a lot. Yes. It could even, this could be a phone call with a friend. Yeah. We talk oh. too much. We talk for too long. And then guess what's happening to the audience? We lose them. Oh my out. gosh. My eyes glaze over. It's so much. Okay, let's talk more about this. Let's talk about, I, maybe this is an interesting approach. What is it that people are doing who are absolutely not verbose? The people that are yeah. straight to the point, not in a really um, abrupt kind of way, they're but just feet. in a way, yeah, they're just concise. The kind mm -hmm. of concise concision, I think is the word, that you really appreciate. Ooh, I can tell you what I appreciate when I'm listening to a speaker or to a presentation. It's when the sentences are short and clear. There's no business jargon, industry speak. It's simple to follow. The presenter lands on the period. There's a nice pause in between the sentences. That is the approach. Personally, I am able to continue to follow yeah. and pay attention. I don't get bored. I don't tune out. And I rarely see it. To be honest, Scott, I rarely see it. Yeah, yeah. And what you described was the first thing that came to mind for me was control. Absolute control. Yeah. Somebody who is speaking in sentences with a discernible period, there's an element of control, but there's another part to this that I think is so fundamental to being the kind of person where you're concise, where you get to the point where it's clear. And that is you listen. I mean, you listen a lot. And I don't just mean with your ears, I mean with your eyes. <laughs> you That pause that you talked about, that silence after the period is, it's that moment in which the speaker is sort of wrestling with that fundamental question. Did that sentence get in? Yeah, they're connect, they're, they're paying attention to their audience. They're seeing how their audience is responding yes. to what they are saying. They're making it about them. Yeah. As opposed to the flip side, which we know what that is. That's a person who's just in getting words out mode. They are okay. just spraying let's, words all over the place. Yes. Yes. Let, let's dig into that some more. Yeah. What I notice is a presenter, they have their important points to make mm -hmm. and they, they will make that point. And then they want to keep adding to it. They're not trusting that they clearly express that point. So they keep adding and repeating. And the audience is, I got it. Move on. Let's move on. We need to trust that we're getting the point across and not having to continue to repeat it. Well, it and I'll add to that, we need to be observant and perceptive to know that it's gotten across because the audience to a degree is telling you that they got it. Yes, by nodding their head or right. looking confused or tilting and yes. squinting their eyes, they are communicating with the presenter the entire time. Yes. Or if you notice they're starting to multitask or their eyes are glazing over. Yeah, well, that's, I think that's, that first big aha for our audience today. If you find that you get verbose, I think the first thing to focus on is 
when you finish a sentence with this downward period sound, you are telling the audience process. You've got to, on an almost sentence by sentence level, be very interested in what your audience is saying back to you. That will end a lot of the verbosity. I mean, it'll get rid of all the words coming out because you're recognizing that it's not just about the words getting out. It's more about what's happening in your head as a listener, right? Were you going to say verbosity? I was. I'm getting. Is that a, is that a word? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think it is. It sounds really good. It's I know. fun to say also. Verbosity. <laughs> well, but that, okay, now go back to that other thing where you said people using jargon. Yes. Does Acronyms, that in? initialisms. Does it fit business. into this? Do people who speak too much or who, you know, or who, you know, who are verbose, are they likely to use too much in terms of acronyms sure. and all those things? Sure. And there's this assumption that the entire audience knows what these acronyms and initialisms mean. Yeah. And it's, it's not true. Wait, what's an initialism? <laughs> oh, you're going to have to Google it. <laughs> so there's acronyms and there's initialisms. And okay. I can't okay. remember. One of them actually spells out a word. Oh, I see. I see. Yes. I, I think can't that's remember. The acronym. That's the acronym, I think. <laughs> that's the acronym. Initialism then is just like a collection of letters that, yeah, it doesn't necessarily make okay. it. Cool yes. Work. Okay. I got it. Okay. okay. Either way, when, we're, when we use too much of that and make the assumption the audience knows what we're talking about, yeah. you could be losing part of your audience. They're trying to figure out what it is. Well, so let's flip that. Those concise people, this fits right into what we said earlier. People who speak in simple language, mm -hmm. right? They don't use a lot of acronyms and really heady kind of academic language. That's well, they do it because they are so focused on getting an idea into somebody's, their listener's mind. Mm -hmm. They know that that's not easy. I mean, we walk into situations as speakers often thinking the act of listening and absorbing what you're saying is an easy thing to do. It is not. If you want to get an idea into somebody's mind accurately, that is difficult. It's it, very intentional. It's you intentional. To, you have to respect work. it. Mm -hmm. But processing, asking your audience to process all those initialisms, acronyms, <laughs> I use the word, <laughs> um, you know, all that stuff that heady language means they have to work harder to get the idea. Oh, I have a perfect example of this. Go for it. When you have a visit with your doctor and your doctor is telling you your prognosis or, yeah. and when they speak in doctor language, you're sitting there going, what in the world, <laughs> what is happening? I yeah. don't understand any of this. And then when a doctor is able to speak in the language of their patient, it's a night and day experience. Yeah, totally. I totally. do believe that we sometimes want to, we, we keep our message complicated to try to look and sound smart. Yes. And that, <laughs> I think it's doing the exact opposite. I know. I, it's annoying the listeners. And people will say, I don't want to dumb this down. I've, I've had that reaction even in coaching people, <laughs> dumb it down. It's you're not dumbing it down at all. You're making it processable. You're making it accessible mm -hmm. to the audience mm -hmm. when you speak in daily language. Yeah. Now, look, there, there'll be times where you're with a group that understands the acronym perfectly. It could be your own team. And if you use that same language over and over again, they can process it easy. It's not an issue. But the whole point, I think, you know, drawing this all together is this. People who are verbose, verbose tend to speak to get words out, right? And they lose control. Yes. There's no yes. perception of the listener getting it. And so in their mind, they often go, I'm not sure the listener got it. I'm just going to add on to this and keep, keep going. It. And then they lose control and they're all over the place. 
Well, I think they also lose track. They lose the focus of what the point is yeah. of their presentation. Yeah, yeah. The, the flip side is if I'm saying, look, I fully respect how difficult it is to be able to get an idea to somebody for them to receive it and understand it. So I'm going to pay close attention to my target, the person I'm speaking to, to see, are they processing what I'm saying? Those periods begin to, begin to come more easily. It's easier to stay in control that way because it's this sort of cooperative act <laughs> where people are communicating back and forth, even if you're the one who's doing the talking in terms of producing sound. Does that make sense? I just got verbose again. <laughs> yes, Is that what you were thinking? Not. <laughs> <laughs> that was intentional, oh, everybody. I meant to do that. Maybe it's because you used to be a teacher. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know what Scott needs to work on. Uh, it's Let's wrap this episode up. It's just getting- Okay, ugly. we're going to wrap this up. I have one tip around acronyms because they're just so common in the workplace. If you are going to use an acronym, please say what it is in its entirety and then use the acronym moving forward if you need to. That's a good tip. Does that make sense? That made great sense. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you have any closing thoughts? No. Okay. Oh, I love one word answers. Thank you. <laughs> what are we doing next week? Next week, we have a gutsy guinea pig guest. Yep. Yep. Fun. So we, are, we are going to, again torture no we don't do that actually these have been a lot of fun we've They're been having so fun. fun with with um coaching and our coaches our our gutsy guinea pigs have come out saying that was great so i'm glad we're doing this great yes me too all thanks, right Scott. thanks One everyone we'll see you right. soon see everybody